The Guardian has drawn up a very interesting and comprehensive list of those people who I think should be held responsible for, or at least have um, answer questions about their role in the Horizon scandal. At the start is a person called Gareth Jenkins, uh, the former chief uh, architect of Fujitsu, and he was responsible for providing the uh, essential computer system that the post office used. I mean, it had already been developed elsewhere, and Fujitsu were taking that over. But it replaced the paper-based system, and, uh, and, and, and it's a system that essentially the post office continues to use. And the post office has asked the government for £252 million to keep it going, and this is on top of the hundred million pounds which it used to uh, to it in an attempt to destroy the case brought by Alan Bates. So there's a lot of taxpayers' money going into defending the indefensible, and in fact, one of the omissions from the Guardian's very fine article is any sort of reference to the general review which was conducted um, by Cartwright King, um, conducted by Brian Altman KC, um, and uh, this is the review of the Cartwright King review. Um, and uh, how, how did that arrive at the view that the prosecution decisions were fundamentally sound? Um, how was how was that done on the basis of the evidence that was before him and in the light of the evidence revealed by the inquiry as to um, the, 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 the appalling way that the post office uh, prosecuted the victims of the Horizon scandal. Uh, was Mr Altman representing the post office in the Court of Appeal? Um... Uh, what, what, what was he suitably independent and without conflict of interest in his uh, advisory work between 2013 uh, onward? And were the representations that he made to the Court of Appeal sufficiently um, and properly accurate and candid? So the, 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 the Altman issue and... Uh, the Swift KC issue, um, I've, for example, Swift's review was was reported wrongly in Parliament. Um, so, so I so I think there's there's lots of questions which remain to be answered. Uh, Rod Ismay is the auditor from Ernst and Young, who joined the Post Office in two thousand and three and was the person who claimed that Horizon was robust. And it's, it, it's that. It's that which formed the basis of the post office's claims again and again and again that the Horizon system was robust. Janel Singh, the post office's chief criminal lawyer, uh, who was involved in a string of specific prosecutions uh, including that of Seema Mizra, um, who was sent to jail. And she collapsed in court when her sentence was handed down. She spent 15 months in jail. She said she would have taken her own life if she'd not been eight months pregnant when she was put in jail. Um, and, you know, I think, I think there's questions there that need to be asked. Uh, jo Swinson, the Lib Dem person, she was the postal miss, uh, minister from 2012 to 2015, replacing Norman Lamb, and uh, this was the period when there was an external review into the Horizon IT system, uh, carried out by Second Sight, by the accountants called Second Sight, um, brought in by the post office to... Uh, to reply to the pressure put 
put on at the post office by the sub-postmasters alliance. And second site's interim report found evidence of flaws and bugs in Horizon, and on two occasions defects in the system which resulted in a shortfall of about £9,000 at 76 branches. However, the post office maintained, and she allowed this, the post office maintained that there was absolutely no evidence of any systemic issues with the computer system. And uh, Joe Swinson backed this up in a, in a statement to the House of Commons. Ed Davey, Sir Ed Davey, the person who is now the Liberal Democrat leader, uh, he was the um, minister in charge of post postal affairs between 2010 and 2012, before Joe Swinson. During the coalition, when the software issues started to come to light, and he refused to meet Alan Bates. In fact, uh, I, I know the press goes on and on and on about his refusal to meet Alan Bates. They did apparently meet briefly. Um, but in the five five letter exchange, he was fairly dismissive. And uh, Bates has described the Liberal Democrat minister's uh, 121 word response as not just disappointing, but offensive. Now, how can this person stand with dignity in the chamber of the House of Commons as the leader of one of the three main parties? Paula Venels, of course, uh, is the other person who needs to answer questions because she was the chief executive of the post office from 2012 to 2019. And uh, this was when all the problems started to be... Um, so, uh, so, so obviously intense, it's when the uh, sub-postmasters alliance took their case through the courts. And she was awarded a CBE, as we know, for services to the post office uh, in 2019. How is that even possible? Who authorised that? Um, she was the person who insisted that the Horizon system was robust, uh, that it um, was not only uh, robust, but it had no bugs, errors or defects. And but, but all this information was there. And ten months after her departure, the post office agreed to settle with 555 claimants and, uh, and, and admit with Fujitsu that it had got things wrong. So she stood in the way of that admission. She has questions to answer and, and, and with some urgency. But there, there are so many other issues. I mean, who, for example, set up these apparently unfair contracts? I know there's a tradition in the UK of setting up unfair and intimidating contracts. I mean, I've seen some of them. Uh, television is full of that rubbish. Uh, and what were the contracts supposed to do, to intimidate? Or was there so much small print that somebody wouldn't even notice it? Um, and, uh, and in fact, Justice Fraser, Mr Justice Fraser, uh, said that um, uh, these problems um, were there in the contracts. And the lawyers threatened, they sued, they were oppressive, bankrupting people like Lee Castleton, um, simply because he was trying to defend himself. He was humiliated in the court. Uh, and he wasn't given access to the information that Horizon contained. Uh, why was that information not disclosed to a defendant? Unfair advantage of, was taken of him and of others. Um, and... The, the, the lawyers working for 
the post office were acting aggressively, it seems. Acting aggressively. On whose authority? Why? Why were they suppressing information? And why were they so intent on a prosecution? The law is supposed to be blind. The law is supposed to be looking at the legal issues in as fair and impartial way. So what I don't understand is how can there be case after case after case where there's a demonstrable error in judgment uh, in, in the system? It can only be that the lawyers were following each other blindly in pursuing this objective to humiliate and belittle as many of the sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses as they possibly could by failing to disclose information, by failing to take their defence seriously, um, by trying to pin arguments about incompetence, misjudgment, recklessness, stupidity onto these victims. And, uh, and, and, and then they were putting pressure on people to accept plea bargains. You must plead guilty to uh, false accounting in order to avoid a prison sentence. Very shocking behaviour. And if this is a standard of British law, maybe nobody is safe. This is why it needs to be examined so carefully and so quickly. Because I think all of us are worried now about what, what on earth is going on. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just disturbing. Deep, deep, deeply disturbing. Where is responsibility to be found? Where is accountability to be found? Where is compensation? Who is to pay compensation? And it's quite right that there should be a thorough inquiry. And it's quite right that that should be allowed to take its time. But it's not right that victims who are now already a demonstrably seen to be innocent should be left hanging around waiting for this tardy instrument um, of law which should have run its course years ago. This should have been implemented, this should have been um, th th there should have been a clear and public inquiry starting in 2019 the moment, the moment um, it was clear that there had been a serious uh, mismanagement of justice. And that hasn't happened. And that is to our, um, to our discredit as a country.